4 million US households installed solar and enrolled in net metering by 2023, contributing to shockingly fast growth for solar in the last decade. This video brought to you by DrunkQuote, helping people buy solar and roofing. Thank you for watching and click subscribe if you enjoy the video. So what are net metering and net building? And should they even matter to you if you're not going to install solar panels? Solar energy is not the same everywhere because utilities see it differently across the United States. And in some places, solar is even more expensive than the grid. Hello, I'm Sinue with DroneQuote. Let's start with net metering, since it has helped fuel the solar industry's explosive growth. Net metering began in the United States when Minnesota passed the first net metering law in 1983. The concept was simple yet revolutionary. People could generate their own electricity and use what they needed, storing any surplus on the grid in monetary credits rather than electrons. Like a battery, but on paper. This sparked a movement with homeowners installing solar panels, becoming both energy producers and consumers. Net metering works like a solar savings account. Generate more electricity than you need and deposit the surplus back to the grid. Need more power at night or on a cloudy day? Withdraw your banked electricity. It's an energy exchange promoting renewable energy while offering significant bill savings. In dollars and cents, the exchange rate was very close to even or right about a one to one. As a result of net metering, solar generation grew over 7,000% from 2011 to 2022 and utilities had to adapt and make changes to keep up with the times. While some utilities adopted net metering and even tallied electricity use and generation annually, others took a different approach with net billing. Where net metering allows you to use the grid as a virtual battery, net billing forces you to sell electricity that flows out of your home and into the meter, often at a wholesale price. So you can buy power from the utility at 25 cents, but sell power to them at 5 cents. That's net billing. This shift aims to distribute grid maintenance costs more evenly among users, ensuring the sustainability of the power grid. But is net billing really about creating a fair system, or is there another layer to this story? Well, unfortunately, it will depend on which camp you're in. Do you already have solar or are you never getting solar? Or do you prefer glamping over camping? Let's start with the never solars, those who vow never to install solar panels. If your utility offers net metering on a one-to-one -one basis, it stands to reason that your rates will increase as homes leave the utility and switch to solar. This is the main argument utilities use for getting rid of net metering. People who go solar skip out on the cost of grid maintenance, but still rely on the grid. If you already have and enjoy net metering benefits, congratulations on switching, especially if it's no longer offered where you live. I installed solar in 2015, and that system was grandfathered in for 20 years, as are a lot of other net metering agreements. And as an existing solar customer, you would be wise to know when that net metering agreement expires and the conditions for keeping it active. Oh, and check this out. If you live in Texas and have installed solar panels in the last couple of years, definitely call your utility company and get an up-to-date status on your net metering agreement. Because those terms are sometimes in effect for as little of to two to five years. If it expires and you aren't made aware, you could come to a nasty surprise in the form of a big electric bill. Now, if you're currently thinking about getting solars, it begins with speaking to an honest and knowledgeable company. Drone quote comes to mind. You can learn more in the video description. Future solar owners would be well served to enroll with net metering programs before they're changed. But if your utility offers peanuts net billing rates or poor net metering, you should design a solar panel system that is as congruent with your home's usage profile. That begins with reducing electricity usage where possible, which starts your ROI on the right foot. Depending on what your utility offers solar customers, the rates they charge for electricity, and how your home uses power, a potential solar solution may vary in panel count, include battery and storage, or use a specific section of your home 
more than the other. In the US, solar policy is a patchwork, varying from state to state, and utilities differ concerning solar power. The debate between net metering and net billing highlights the complexities of balancing utility profits, consumer benefits, and the adoption of renewable energy. A fact of life is that electricity rates will continue to increase over time like anything else. For a lot of people living in areas with good net metering arrangements with the utility, solar makes a lot of sense and can even make dollars. In best case scenarios, you can see a return on investment within five or fewer years. So there's a lot to be said about the financial benefits of solar. But the fact is that not everyone is a good candidate for solar, especially if your utility only offers net billing. And there's more people out there who would be better off not installing solar panels. Are you one of them? Check out our video on six reasons why you shouldn't install solar to find out.